This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. After 240 days of steeping and integrating, I was ready to start the discovery phase of my life. Discovery of my purpose, reconnecting with friends, reading and learning again. I knew my life was going to go in a new direction, but frankly, I had no clue what, how, when, and where. I only knew that I could trust it would find its way to me, and it did. When I heard myself laughing again repetitively, that was the true confirmation. I had come out of the cocoon and I could finally spread my wings. I consider myself to now be on my never-ending discovery journey. Discovery of myself, of others, discovery of how I can best show up in this world and have the best, most positive impact possible. I don't have a label for who I am becoming other than that I finally came to believe more and more every day that I am enough that I can connect, that I can love to connect with others, and that most of the things that I had believed were not available to me are, in fact, abundantly available to me, and so are they to you, says Johnny Lin. Valeria Tellis interviews Johnny Lin Zakot, aka JT. She is a former executive who made the leap from the corporate world to become a clinical hypnotherapist, licensed RTT therapist, ICF certified coach, and hypno coach. She's developed a results-driven approach to life and career transition, leveraging her radical transformation, professional expertise, and numerous certifications and credentials to offer second-to-none one-on-one hypno-coaching and group programs. She hosts the podcast, It's Just a Belief, is the founder of hypnocoach.ca, and is the co-founder of Queen Bee Holistic Health. JT supports entrepreneurs and executives who are aware they stand in the way of their own professional or personal expansion and need to be rapidly guided away from the status quo. They're self-aware and know that despite all their efforts, seminars, courses, something is still blocking them or not quite where they want it to be. Then we create those moments of absolute clarity, power, and confidence that allow them to break free of their limitations and leap forward. It is really all about uncovering unconscious beliefs that stand in their way and acquire long-lasting pervasive beliefs that propel them beyond their current limitations. The single most important thing that's contributed to the success of JT's hypno-coaching practice is her focus on tangible results. That is what she's most known for. Her made-to-order approach is all about going deep to make key transformations. Meet JT at hypnocoach.ca. Here is the interview with Jeanne-Lynn Sukot, a.k.a. JT. In your own words, who is Jane-Lynn Turcot? <laughs> So in my own words, um, I'm a woman in my 50s who left the corporate world, who was let go actually from the corporate world to transform and start helping others transform as well. I would say that's the um, that's really the, the main summary. The question I have after listening to you on how you see yourself is that transformation or the transition between the corporate world and doing healing work. That's how I see you, being a healer. So how was that transition, JT? So one day my agenda was full. I knew a year ahead what my life would be. And then my employer did a big reorg and I was let go amongst a lot of other colleagues. And I found myself with an empty schedule for the year to come. 
And I think I was already tired of this life, traveling all the time, um, working nonstop. And I had an alcohol problem at the time who really skyrocketed when I found myself not employed, but it's really easy to start drinking early in the day. So the transition was really, a, I would say it, it's been a three years process where I first changed my life. So stopped the drinking, lost the weight. And then it was all about starting to peeling the onions, which is really how I work with my clients, right? It's like, as soon as you start healing something or then there's another layer showing up and I was kind of dealing with each of the layers showing up. And for many years, I, my identity was my career. I was an executive for a very well-known and respected company and firm. And so when you travel the world and you tell people where you work, what you do, it was kind of preceding who I was. It was more important in a certain way than who I was. So that was the big change. The big change was really to talk, be represented, you know, or be behind a big name and a big aura, and then suddenly showing up as you, yourself. Yeah. That was a big change. Yeah, and I, I can imagine how big that is because we usually hold down so tightly to identities, right? In labels. Absolutely. That might be the only death really that exists from my perspective. It's losing the sense of identity. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you define success these days? What is to be successful to you? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, for me, success right now, is, I think we need to accept that success will change over time. Our definition um, is flexible. And uh, for me right now, success is to really be able to have my clients get the objectives they want to get and even more. So help them free themselves and to be able to do it at my pace and on my terms. <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> that sounds that's good. Really, that's really what my success here, the success for me right now is that I am, I feel really free and I feel that I really healed so many difficult parts of me and and so many difficult and I've changed so many of my beliefs that that freedom that I live inside of me is really my success right now I love that this idea that freedom can become definition of success and of course a lot of us have different ideas right of for what freedom is Absolutely. so that's another conversation I would say Talk to me for a moment about the difference between change and transformation. So a change, so there's kind of four on the continuum, there's a fine tuning. This is when you just do a little thing. Let's say, you know, you just do a little thing, then you change one thing so you can change a habit. When you transform, when you transition, it's between that time where you have multiple changes, and the transformation is really when all those multiple changes have occurred. And you see that your life in many aspects, financial, health, love, career, relationship, spirituality, in many of those aspects, mm -hmm. you see that your life is no longer the same. That's a real transformation. And it's very tangible, right? Absolutely. It's very clear. You mentioned spirituality. What is spirituality to you, JT? Uh, that's a very interesting question for me. I am not an utterly spiritual person, to be honest, because maybe I look at people that are very, very spiritual and I find myself <laughs> not as much. Maybe it's uh, by comparison. But for me, spirituality is to be connected to your own heart. It's also being open that other forces or other energy other people out there also own their own truth and this is really where i see spirituality it's it, for me it's an immense respect for who you are as a human being and who other uh, as well we talked briefly off record about the video of um Garbo Mate on attachment and authenticity authenticity versus attachment that's how the video it's titled. So is that somehow this idea of spirituality you have connected to authenticity? Yes. 
So I see it a lot in my practice. And I must say, I have an issue with the word authenticity. I think it's overused, misused. And it's impossible to extract the culture in which you grow up, in which you are. So your authenticity is always kind of tinted with whatever era you live in or culture you live in or country you were born or family. So authenticity for me is a very, it's a skewed word in a certain way. But what Gabor Maté talks about is that when there's authenticity, when you have the choice between being authentic and attachment, most people will go for attachment. So they will be inauthentic or untrue to keep the attachment, to keep the relationship. And we see that a lot in toxic relationships. We see that a lot um, in family systems where conditional love, where, you know, in order for you to stay in the family system, to keep the job, in order for you to, whatever it is, sometimes survival, really, um, you will really trump who you are to favor the attachment. And it's very subtle, too, isn't it? This dynamic. Yes. Because... I see that, how much we give in when it comes to our own truth, just for the sake of being in a relationship, keeping that place stable and destructive. It's also survival. You know, we're wired for that. Like we're wired to stay in the tribe, to stay secure and safe and everything, even though in 2022, it's not as much true as it was at the tribe's time, but we're wired for that, right? So it's it's kind of that, balance between being who you are aligned true to yourself at the time you know true to me in 2022 is not the same as true to me in 2030 you know and so the idea is that true to yourself and then at the same time attach healthily to the people and the systems around you um, it's a it's a balance act <laughs> what would look like this graceful dance between healthy attachment and authenticity? I think once you really have done the type of work that I do, where you've gone very deep into understanding your beliefs, how they formed, and how you came about to believe all the false things about yourself that you came to believe, you can look at other people and say they have the same thing. They have all those beliefs about themselves, about life and everything that they formed, depending on what kind of life they have been, um, they've been through. And so then you can respect that the other person also has their own truth. So you can say, okay, I have my truth. They have their truth. They're from their beliefs. I formed my beliefs. Now there's a, there's a space where we are both comfortable together. There's a space where I can be myself and let the other one be themselves as well. Sometimes, you know, the zone of compatibility is big. Sometimes it's very small. So I think it's about being able to um, to see that not in separation or not, I'm bad, you're bad, you're good, I'm good. It's more like you are there and I, I accept you and, I, and I'm here and I accept it and love it. And let's see where is the zone where we can meet. And sometimes that zone lasts a week, a year, a lifetime. But we always have that idea that it needs to be forever, right? Otherwise, it's not worth it. Well, I believe it's worth it no matter how long it lasts. So, Would you say that when we have unhealthy attachments, that leads us to feel stuck? Is that the reason, the cause for being stuck? It's one, one of the, one of the reason, and I'm not going to go into all the theory of attachment, but you know, one of the reason really is about, you know, those fears, like fears of abandonment, fears of being rejected, not being connected, not feeling connected, not feeling good enough. All those beliefs uh, really keeps you uh, sometimes in unhealthy situations. Um, you know, and it doesn't mean, I always say to people, like, it doesn't mean that the other person is wrong or bad or unhealthy or toxic or whatever. It, it may just mean this is not where you're meant to be and in that relationship right now. Um, and there are other things to learn with other people elsewhere, right? Um, That's uh, 
An interesting way, the way you say that it's not where we're meant to be. That sounds spiritual to me. <laughs> this, this idea that there's a design, right? That we're all kind of moving according to some sort of plan. You help people who are stuck in their life or career transition and transformation to break through and live free from the limiting beliefs that they chose to let go. This, it's a part of your, I think you're on your website or part of your biography, I believe. So I'm just paraphrasing and reading that section. But the question I have is about this idea of living with this kind of freedom that you speak of, freedom from limiting beliefs. So the question is, how possible it is to navigate this reality in a human body without belief systems? Do you kind of replace those yeah. Limiting beliefs. So you replace them with what I call um, propelling beliefs. <laughs> I like to call them propelling beliefs or healthier beliefs, or and you still choose them. So the idea that if you know you change your limiting beliefs and there's another reality that's going to be there in front of you, you're going to have to deal with, right? So the idea that you it's true that you're becoming freer and freer and lighter and lighter and and it's easier to to i would say to to go through life once you've let go of your limiting beliefs but life is still there and life will still throw things at you it's really how you will react to it but if you change a belief let's say you change the belief i'm not good enough by i know that i am enough and then you encounter a situation where it really rubs somebody the wrong way to feel that you are enough and you carry this with you and you show up with this, but it just provocates somebody or doesn't make them feel good at all. You're going to have to deal with this, but you never had to deal with that before because you didn't feel good enough about yourself. So you never had encountered that before. So the idea is that we change beliefs, we become lighter, freer, it's easier to navigate through life, it's easier to have a sense of self and respect for others of where they are in their life and what they want and what they choose to do with their life. But you will encounter new situation with those new beliefs that you will have to deal with. And this is when it becomes interesting, because that, that encounter with new situation will push you to keep on doing the work or just saying, you know what, I'm good where I am and this is good enough for me. I've done enough and that's good, you know, but you know, it's not that nothing new will ever happen or being thrown at you. Mm. So, so you're going to react to it. Right. That makes so much sense to me as well. And it makes me think about the idea of healing as a destination or any kind of destination doesn't really resonate with me. And that makes sense the way you're saying. So it's like the peeling the onion, it just keeps going deeper, almost like diving into life deeper and deeper if we choose to, right, in a way, if we are open enough. I mean, that sounds fascinating to me. I love this idea. Yeah, I never say, like, there's something with me um, that I don't like about that spiritual reality right now is that kind of supersedes other people belief system or anything. It's like, it, it's not, now it's like the supremacy of that spiritual reality and I don't really embrace that to be honest for me right now is that if you decide to peel the onion you're going to be it's going to be easier and easier for you to navigate life that's really what how I see it and besides you some other people might have find other ways to uh, learn about their, themselves and navigate life and for me it's as good so when I have people, especially couples, and you have somebody saying, you know, oh, he's he's not there, he's not growing, he's not doing the work, I don't embrace that. Like this person is where they are, they decide to do, and maybe they'll take another road that's going to work for them. So that's really, um, and I know what I'm saying is not popular, but this is really <laughs> how, how I position my, myself. I love that, JT. The really resonates true to me because that's what life really is. It's constantly changing. And sometimes if from one's perspective, it seems like it's not, especially with family members. <laughs> we tend to judge and, and say that they are not changing, they're stuck and all that from our own perspective and filters. But the truth is, I believe life is always supporting itself and growing and evolving in its own terms, in its own way. 
in exactly. time. So yeah, I absolutely believe that. That has to do with freedom, doesn't it? I do believe that life is free. It's all about freedom. I uh, Yeah, I think this is why, actually, that's why I, I want, not I want, but I do really, I am really in that frame of mind that there's a lot of other ways, like, I, when I when I talk to people when they decide to come to work with me, it's like okay, this works. It it does bring tangible, concrete result change in everything. And if you want to come along, I know I'll bring you where you want to be. But there's other ways as well, and they're as valuable. So, another open question I have for you is about the: Do you see a purpose for the human experience? What would that be? I don't have the answer to that. What I see, though, uh, in my practice, I see people who are trying to be better human beings, who are trying to feel better in that human experience. And we've seen it in the past two years. There's a lot more unexpected or that we don't know about this human experience than what we think we do. We think we know, you know, most of it, or we've seen most of it and yeah. everything, right? And then the mm-hmm. past two years have shown us that, you know, there's not, we didn't know that much, right? So for what I see about the, the purpose for me is really to know that all this will pass, you know, all this passes. And in that passage that you are, in that very tiny moment where you're going to be here, then try to embrace all that is there for you and for your people around you as much as possible. So there's that ripple effect. Um, That's really what I see. I know it's not a great uh, perspective, but that's really, really where I am right now. Yeah. It sounds like the you is speaking about the purposes, individual purposes, that life is a network, everything's connected, and exactly. right in a way, we have the sense of purpose, but it's actually life doing its work. <laughs> and in the end, who knows, as you said, there's many different perspectives, spiritual perspectives that I have, but I would not kind of bring that up here now, maybe later, if there's an invitation for that. So another question I have is on healing. What are some of the obstacles to healing, JT? Oh, it's the attachment to the the pain. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah tell me about you it. Know, sometimes we're so attached to our pain because <laughs> our pain plays a role. The pain, you know, the limiting beliefs, whatever it is, it plays a role in our lives. Often it brings attention. It keeps us from uh, moving forward because we're afraid of moving forward. What's going to happen? Again, the attachment uh, thing as well. Afraid to lose people around us. So. There's a tangle. This pain that is there, right, um, serves us. And that's why, that's the, that's the reason number one why people don't let go of their pain is because it serves them in a, in a very, in a very um, legitimate way, right? They've learned to live with that. And they think that this is the familiar. It is the familiar for them. So because it's familiar, then it's easier and your brain always tries to keep you in the familiar because it's more secure than something you don't know, right? So you're going to stay there uh, because there is, a, there is a role it plays in your life and because it's familiar. Yeah, and that's amazing how a lot of the times we don't see that. We experience it, but we don't really understand. We don't become aware of these forces, the way we work and navigate life. That's fascinating. When we become aware, then everything changes. Yeah, when you see our pain, let, I, I have somebody in mind who, who was very, very sad all her life. And when she saw that that sadness was really only a way that she has learned to engage with people, to build bridge with people, to uh, enter into communication with people, her pain was kind of serving us, serving her, sorry, to relate with people. That was so familiar to her. She used that when she was a child to get uh, her things around, and she kept using the sadness, so she kept being sad. Oh, wow. (laughs) And that's when she realized that she has the choice. She has the choice of let go of that sadness and choose whatever else she wants. 
and to relate with people and engage with people with a different model. Yeah, that's such an interesting idea, which resonates true to me. Sometimes pain or being unhealed uh, has benefits, those kinds of benefits, right? Survival benefits. And another question that came up is the difference between pain and suffering. Do you see any? I think suffering, I never thought about it, but now that you ask the question, I think suffering for me is re, there's some of re-ashing, <laughs> some of, there's some of feeding into it. And there's some of um, finding ways to keep it with us as a comforting friend and pain um, could come uh, unexpectedly, uh, a point in time, you know, that's how I would, you know, instinctively without never having really thought about it. So you are a clinical hypnotherapist, licensed RTT therapist, ICF certified coach, hypno coach. That's an interesting idea. And you also host a podcast titled It Is Just a Belief. And you're also the founder of hypnocoach.ca, and you're also the co-founder of Queen Bee Holistic Health. What was the main inspiration for you to do what you do? And also, what is the main intention and purpose of your work, JT? So I was already a coach, and um, I had a fear of abandonment up to the roof. And I lost my employment um, in other situations in my life. This fear of abandonment was really reactivated. So I went and I had hypnotherapy. And after one session, the fear of abandonment was gone. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm doing in life. I am, I am doing this because I, coaching was good, but I thought it was long. And I'm a very impatient person. I like results and tangible results, and I don't like to talk about things for hours without no results. So I then searched. I found Marissa Peer, went to a leg, got trained by her, um, came back, started my business. So that's really the, the, the impulse. My purpose is really to help people live free from those false limiting beliefs they have about themselves thinking they're not good enough, thinking things are not available to them, thinking that they are so different, they can't connect. For me, when um, I know um, after this work, people, they are freer, they have a much clearer, cleaner life. It's easier for them to navigate through life. They're better employee, better employer. Most, you know, many of my clients are CEOs, entrepreneurs executives. And, and I know that because they will be better with themselves, they will be better with the world around them. And the ripple effect of that for me is immense. And this is really where I feel good about what I do. Is hypnotherapy or hypno coaching for everyone? So everyone who wants to, yes. So, uh, you know, hypnosis, hypnosis is a very natural state. You go there every day before you fall asleep, uh, before you're totally up. So it's a very natural state. And, and it's like anything. If somebody doesn't really want it, it's not going to work, right? Um, you can't have somebody do the work if they don't really want to. So that's the, that's the thing, right? Yeah. So we need to be open and at least curious, yes. right, about it. I'm not good for the curious people. So... So that's the thing with me. People who work with me, they've done some work already. They've they, they've done some work either with a therapist, either, you know, in different modalities. And they hit a wall at one point where they feel they've learned a lot. They've grown a lot. Things have changed in their life. But there's still this thing that they can't put their finger on where they feel block. This is where I come into play. Mm, so curiosity is not a good place to come from, right, when it comes to hypnotherapy. Well, yeah, maybe other type of hypnotherapy, but the practice that I have me is too intense for people who are just curious. Okay, so don't, don't try that <laughs> if you're just curious. <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> Do you actually hold these sessions online? Is that something that it, it works as effectively as doing the session in person? Yes, my practice has always been online. I've done very few clients in person um, because they're worldwide. I do sometimes in person. Uh, 
the thing that people really like about having the sessions uh, online is that my sessions run for two to three hours each. So at the end, people are just want to be alone and they just want to be in their bed or they go for a walk, but they want to be in their bubble. So taking a car, having to drive or taking a bus or whatever is not really um, their the preferred thing. So so it works very well in that perspective also because it is very intense work. I have questions for you about the method that you have created. The piece that you wrote, you sent it to me, it's called The Three Steps to Successful Change and Transformations. So there are three main steps that are build a team, that's the first one, take action and then let it sink in. So you have those three main steps and then you have other steps which you call them the change continuum fine-tuning change transition and transformation so talk to me about the three main steps the building a team take action and let it sink in so this is uh really funny how things are when i stopped drinking when i became sober um 3.5 years ago I developed a model without knowing I was developing a model. So I had in my kitchen a blackboard and I did three columns. And in the first column, I wrote what I needed. And in the second column, I wrote who would provide. And the third column was how much would that cost me? So I did kind of a home-based therapy program. And so the first step of this approach is really to have an A team around you. So to have a team of people who understand what you want to achieve, uh, people who will help you get where you want that work in synergies and are there for you. Um, that is very fundamental. In my, my transformation, I probably had 20 people around me. Sometimes you will have small transformational, smaller change, and you only need two or three people around you. You can really scale it to what you need. But having a team uh, around you is really the, the base, the fundamental of um, such important changes in your life. And team members, you know, they can be there two weeks, three weeks. They can be there for three months. You, you know, they're there for you and you choose them. And there's some criteria and everything that I've put out there um, in another article that I wrote. But that is really the fundamental is to have an A team. Then the second part is to action every day. And this is to count on what we call the compound interest, right? So every day you action towards the change you want to see in your life. Sometimes it could be resting, but you just don't rest to say, oh, today I'm lazy, I'm doing nothing. You just say, you know, today I rest because I decide that this is what I need today in light of what I'm trying to accomplish and my body needs to rest and my brain needs to rest and I'm just resting today. And I do that because I love myself, I appreciate myself because I know I'm enough, I'm worth it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, it's, it's really conscious action every day and the action can run from five minutes to three hours but the idea is that you run it like a project so every day you know if you build a building you're gonna have every day something happening right in in that building so you know this is really um and then the third step for me lasted six months because i wasn't a major transformation but it could last one day for somebody who has a very smaller transformation but it's let it sink it's like instead of running for the next change or the next thing you want to see in your life is to be able to start to like a sponge to really take it in and start to really live with the things you have changed, you know, live with me as a sober person, as a, as a, as an entrepreneur, etc. everything I had changed in my life. So for six months, I did nothing outside of my regular life. Then, uh, meditating, I did the curtain Kriya for 280 days and that's all I did. And, um, and it was fantastic because I felt I really cemented all the work that I had done. And then I was ready for the next wave, which came for me. For me, it comes into waves of changes and I see them coming. I know when they're coming and I know what I need to work on. But um, the idea is, um, you know, as, as any of us, I keep working 
improving my own self and, and fine tuning sometimes, but that's really the three steps that are so easy, so simple, yeah. but helps to have a structure. And then you mentioned also about the initial spark. So every change and transformation starts with that. Talk to me for a moment about that spark and how do we learn to identify that? Ah, oh, that's, uh, you know, the spark is the moment and it can be nothing. It could be you open a book and you know that there's something in your life that needs to change. It could be a conversation. It could be a movie. Uh, it could be a walk with a friend, but it's that moment that you know, you know so much that you know that status quo is not possible. And if you persist in the status quo, you know, most of the time things happen, right? Some people will say, if you don't, if you don't hear, you know, if you don't listen to the message, they'll keep, you know, you'll keep hearing it louder and louder. But for me, it's really that spark, that moment. And in that moment, you, you Often there is a kind of a fear, but there is, a, there is also that I'm, I can do it, right? There is that moment where you feel strong and on top of the mountain. And that's kind of that energy that push you and help you to um, move towards uh, the changes, you know, that you want to see in your life. The feeling is, is in the body too, right, JT? We feel it with the body, the body and mind, and emotions, everything. Yeah, it also resonates, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, when I think about some of the sparks that I had to make change in my life, I can remember vivid those moments. They're very powerful. And, and the more you have this experience, the more you recognize the signs because your mm. body kind of react in a yeah. certain way. Right. 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 For me, it's kind of a download. Yeah. There's kind of an energy that drops in. And, and I know, I know now this, I, I know, I, I know I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know I got the message and, yeah. I, know, and I know I'm going to change something. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, <laughs> it happens in your life, the more you trust it as well, right? I love these conversations, I have to say, <laughs> because they just teach us so much. There's so many reminders. Um, yeah, I love the, what you do. It's very unique. There are probably other ideas similar out there, but it came across, it's a very unique thing. I don't know, what, very refreshing. That's what it is. Thank you. I want to mention that just a few passages in the article that you sent, that caught my attention. You said the right approach was to run toward freedom and happiness instead of running away from addiction and pain. Powerful message here. And then you also said, when I heard myself laughing again repeatedly, <laughs> there was a true confirmation. I had come out of the cocoon and I could finally spread my wings. I love that <laughs> because <laughs> even that symbology of wings, the way you wrote this, is just that's the symbol for freedom. And laughing, too. Uh, there's something freeing about laughter. There's something about laughter that's so liberating. So it's interesting how you use those words in connection to that idea of freedom. It's funny because we, you talk about healing, right? When I'm under hypnosis with clients and then they start laughing about something and they laugh and they laugh and they laugh. I know. I know. They're, I know at that very moment there is a part of them that gets the message and that is really into um, a major transformation and change and that things are consolidating inside, inside themselves. It's very clear. Laughter, in a way, it is a sign, isn't it? This feeling of contentment, even if we have no reason for it. It's a sign for that change has taken place or it's about to come. There's a door that's being opened. I agree. So we're almost at the end. I do have a few more questions for you, JT. Would you like to add anything else that we didn't cover today? No, that was quite... Uh, uh, thank you for all your questions, by the way. I didn't say it every time, but thank you. They were very... Uh, they helped me reflect. And there are questions that I never thought about, so I'm going to reflect on them. Oh, I love this. Yeah, I love questions. I love this. <laughs> it's just very opening and, and freeing in some way for all of us. I can feel like I learned so much from all of you. And it seems like it's an exchange, an energetic exchange of something, <laughs> of some sort <laughs> of goodness. So my ending questions, I'll ask you this one. This is a fun one. What do you love most about being in a human body? 
Oh, I love to be in the water. <laughs> ah, tell me about it, JT. I love that too. <laughs> That's the only thing that comes to mind immediately, the water. Yeah, the water. Mm, there's something expanding about water. It's just, yeah, it, it's very attractive to me for some reason as well. When I was in my transformation, I think at one point I was taking four or five baths a day. I just, it was my healing. It was kind of my, there was something about taking my bath that, that was keeping me grounded and I needed it at the time. What is true power to you? The true power is to wake up in the morning and to know that you are enough. Mm -hmm. It's to know that, that no matter what, you really, really are enough. What you are is okay. Mm. That's a true power for me. I love that. Yes, yeah, a billion times that realization, right? That we are enough. Yeah. In practice, right, JT? Because it seems like, it seems to be an understanding of realization, but also practice. It seems well, when, to when me. you know it, when you really, really know that you are enough, like in every cell of your body, in your entire, when it's not something intellectual, but it's something that you know, really, um, as much as you know that you are a human being, you don't question that. You don't ever question that you are good enough. The power of that, it's immense. And my last question is, what three experiences you wish everyone to have before they lose the body, before they die? I wish they laugh to laugh to cry, like laugh laugh like they don't sense their body anymore <laughs> yes. you know that that real real oh, yeah. laugh. <laughs> yes i wish that they wake up one morning beside somebody they love and they feel that love back uh that shared through uh love and uh the other experience is i yeah, one day you look at yourself, you hear, you, like you see yourself acting or behaving or reacting and being so proud and seeing the difference of, you know, how you would have reacted before, how you would have been triggered and see that, you know what? Wow, that's the realization that I really, really changed. And being able to experience it um, and see it in, in, in clear light, that, that is a really fantastic experience. Yeah. It very much sounds to me. I have some glimpses of that, of course. Thank you so much, JT, for what you do, how you do it, this beautiful intention to help others through the work you do and everything else in between that could be felt. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valeria. It was a pleasure. It is really a pleasure. I really enjoyed that interview. Oh, it's fun. It's spiritual, <laughs> meaningful fun, whatever you want to call it. It's just fun. <laughs> so before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your work, services, products, and future projects? So hypnocoach.ca really is the website where pretty much everything is hosted. My, my, my podcast is there and all the platforms as well. Uh, it's Just a Belief, which is my podcast. People can book a 33 minutes call with me to talk about their challenges and issues. And then we can see if, you know, we're meant to work together. Then uh, I also have group programs uh, once in a while. One is a if no 360 program. Another one is with a doctor, Ayurvedic doctor, where we have a season your life program. And when they're offered, they are on the website. Mm, wonderful. I'll have the link on your podcast profile, too. Thank you so much again, JT. And we'll talk soon. Bye for now. Yeah. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Janilyn Surcot, JT, and her work, please visit hypnocoach.ca. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org/podcast. Thank you again for listening, and bye for now. <laughs>